commandment. Um, now, I want to go over a couple of things here. Uh, just show you this. So this is a, this sort of a presentation I put together. And you know, I don't, I don't always like, like to just always be debunking arguments from Stephen Anderson, but I know a lot of you guys listen to him, so sometimes I have to cover these points because I feel like if I don't cover them, then I haven't really done a thorough job of um, defending that point of view. So we, st we start with the verse Deuteronomy 22.5, right? And we know that the verse says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, because there is no verse that tells you what a man or woman's garment is, you have to go outside the Bible to do that. So um, somebody might put a chart together like this and they'll say, well, we've got women's clothes, we've got clothes that pertain to both genders, and then we've got men's clothes. And they might start by saying, well, let's, well, what about a dress? Who, who's that for? Or, or, or a skirt? And you say like, oh, everyone's, obviously, obviously that's woman's clothing, right? So they put, okay, dress and skirt in the woman's column. This, this is how the argument flows. And then they'll say, oh, maybe a shirt. Well, that's, that's unisex. Both men and women can wear a shirt. You've got a jumper. Well, both men and women wear jumpers, a hat, socks, a necktie. You've got... And it was funny, actually, because somebody said a tie is a man's garment. But then, I, I, I personally think it is, my opinion. I, I, don't think, I don't know whether you know, a tie is really a woman's garment. I think women wear scarves and things like that. But you know, put it, to make the point, put it in the middle column. To say it's both and then you've got gloves you both wear gloves and then shoes that both genders wear shoes so they'll say like well if you leave it at that well then you know there's a problem here because there's nothing in the men's column so the bible's saying don't wear that which pertains to a man to a woman and there's nothing in the men's column then that, that sort of doesn't make sense and so what's so what's missing ah pants and shorts so you put it in that last column pants and shorts oh sorry I, that was not meant to be there i must have got my slides mixed up Say so pants and shorts is a men's garment, and now we can see, ah, the woman's garment is a dress and a skirt, and a man's garment are pants and shorts. Therefore, to obey that commandment, women should not wear pants, and if you do, you're an abomination. Now, I want to just show you the, the three assumptions, because you know, when you first hear that argument, it can be quite convincing, but there are many assu underlying assumptions going through that argument and I just want to share three with you. So there, I think there are three assumptions when you make this sort of argument. One is that the article of clothing needs to be defined. Right? Because you start off by saying, well, there's a commandment not to put on women's clothing. Well, you have to know what a woman's, cl woman's clothes are. Otherwise, how are you meant to obey this commandment? I mean, how, how c you know, the argument would go, well, how would it make sense if God's telling us not to put, a woman not to put on men's clothes and we don't even know what men's clothes are? Now, this is an assumption that we need to know what men's and women's clothing are um, in order to obey this commandment. And I would make the argument that, hey, God doesn't tell us what modest apparel is. So does that make the commandment for women to be adorned in modest apparel just of no effect? Because how can you even obey this commandment if you don't even know what modest apparel is? You know, the Bible says not to, put on, not to adorn yourself with costly array. Well, the Bible didn't tell me how costly is costly. Do I have no idea how to obey this commandment now? because it's just not defined explicitly. Or, you know, the Bible doesn't tell me how many centimeters is long or short hair. So I don't have the specifics. Can I just not obey this commandment? Like, it, like, wouldn't it be the same if I said to you, it would just not make sense for God to say, it's a shame for a man to long, have long hair if he doesn't even tell me how long long is. That's because it, it's a principle and there are other ways you can determine whether or not to follow the principle. And it's the same here. So the, so the assumption, first of all, is we need to find exactly what women's clothes are. We have to find exactly what men's clothes are. Well, you don't need to. You can have the principle and it can be an issue of the conscience. So number one assumption is that the article of clothing needs to be defined. The second assumption in this chart is that opinion or culture determines commandment. Because when, when we put skirt and dress in the women's column, who are we asking? We're just like asking the culture. We're not using a Bible verse. We're not using anything in the Bible to determine this is a woman's garment or this is a man's garment. We're just asking the general uh, population. And, you know, if I was to ask, if I was to show you a picture of a dress or, or a skirt and show this audience, obviously this audience is going to say it's a woman's garment. But let's say we were in Samoa or Fiji and I showed you a picture of a sarong. What would they say then? 
Do you know what I mean? So uh, th th this is one of the underlying assumptions that culture or, so or how many people's hands go up in the auditorium. That determines truth now for us? No, it doesn't. Um, you know, and let me show you this verse because I, I, I would make the argument... Uh, I'll show you this verse in Exodus 20. Verse 26. You know, I would make the argument that even though the Bible does mention, you know, in, in Daniel, I think is probably the strongest one, where uh, three men thrown in the fire were wearing hosen, you know, another word for pants. But I would make the argument that men in the Old Testament didn't only wear pants, but sometimes they wore skirts as well, um, in the terms of, of a robe. Because, you know, there's this, there's this verse in Exodus where it says, you know, thou will make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone, for if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. And look at this verse, neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Now, if every man in the Old Testament was wearing pants and not like a robe type garment, how, are your, how is your nakedness discovered when you walk up steps? You know, the, the reason why the, the priest had to wear the linen breeches is because if they did need to step around, their nakedness could be revealed, but they would wear the linen breeches to cover their nakedness. But if there's a, if there's a commandment from God to say, hey, don't, when you make an altar, I don't want you to put steps on it, because if you walk up by steps, your nakedness is going to be revealed. I mean, that doesn't apply for pants. It only applies for something like a robe or a skirt or a garment. So you could make the argument that they were wearing both in the Old Testament. Um, and people do now, right? Even people in other cultures do. So if you're going to make this chart to say, well, a skirt is a, is a woman's garment, man is, is a, uh, a pants or a man's garment, from the Bible you could technically put, you know, the dress and the skirt. Let's go back here. Um, like you could technically put these over here, right, if that's what they were wearing in the Bible. And then you'd have nothing in the women's column, you know, and then you'd have that, that problem. So I could make the argument that, well, from culture and even from the Bible, it could be suggested that they wore both. Um, and therefore, um, uh, all these things could be unisex. But, you know, the last assumption here I've got that sort of destroys this chart, in my opinion, is that clothing must be separated at the highest category level. Because, you know, when, he's, uh, when, when you're asking what is a dress, you know, a dress is a higher category level to like, say, you know, a robe, uh, you know, a kung fu outfit, you know, your, your Sunday dress. I mean, these are all long one piece garments or like a skirt. You could have a you could have a skirt. You could have like a, a, a tutu dress. You could have a, a, a kilt. You could have a sarong. So why when we're putting this chart together, does it have to be like these generic cate high level categories? Shirt, shoes, glove. You know, when it's shirt, why isn't it blouse and business shirt? So depending on the level of category that I fill this chart with, I'm going to get a different result, aren't I? So the assumption here is that we must define clothes at the very highest level. Now, if I do that, I, I would make the argument that the chart should look more like this. That at the highest category level, actually everything is unisex. Because there's women and men versions of all of these. So... You know, um, what am I about to tell you? They'll say, like, you know, how can, you know, how, how can God give a command that applies to no piece of clothing at all? Well, if you divide it by the highest category level, then, yeah, I guess it wouldn't make sense. But if we go a bit deeper into each of these categories, then we're going to start seeing some differences. Um, so I would argue that the highest level categories are unisex. There's actually both. Uh, in these categories, but then gender identity of clothing is actually determined by other things, cultural differences, maybe colors, styles, uh, and things like that. So I thought I'd give us some examples, right? So let's say you have a shirt. Um, so I, I might wear something like this, right? I, I, would, I would see myself wearing something like this, but I wouldn't wear something like that. You know? And some guys wear shirts like that. I think it's girly, but then that's my, that's my opinion, right? You know, because I don't have a Bible, I don't have a Bible verse to say that's a man's garment. But in my opinion, that's, I mean, that's a woman's garment. But in my opinion, that, that's a woman's garment. Um, with the frilly, you know, the tight fitting. Now you might have a hat, right? And you say like an Akubra hat. That's a man's hat. Soul winning hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a soul winning hat. 
Well, that's a woman's hat. Now, could I make the dogmatic statement that that is a woman's hat? No, I'd have to say, I think that's a woman's hat. In my opinion, that looks girly. It's pink, it's purple, it's got a flower on it. You know, that's a girly hat. Uh, what about gloves? So you might have man's gloves. Somebody might find those as feminine gloves. You know, I, I think they're, they're, that that would look like a man's gloves. Um, but a woman's gloves might look like that. You know, sort of a more girly color in my opinion. Um, and, and furry. Now what about shoes? I would see myself wearing these. <laughs> But I wouldn't see myself wearing these. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I just threw that, in, I threw that one in for Peter. I was hoping you were going to be here this morning, but you came later. It's so like trying to delay this slide a bit. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, you know, say shoes. These are my dress shoes, but a woman's dress shoes might look like this, All right? So you got men's shoes and you got women's shoes, but they're both shoes, right? Pants. You know, so these are the pants I wear. These are some some grey dickies. I've actually got them on display today. <laughs> But woman's pants might look like that. Now, I wouldn't be caught dead in these. You know, I consider those a woman's garment. I would not. I would never wear something like that. But I would consider something like that modest. You know, to me, you know, it's as loose as a skirt. But technically, they're pants because they're joined in the middle and they and they go around the ankles. That's not a skirt. Those are pants. Uh, shorts, for example. So men's shorts might be a, a certain color. Women's shorts might be a different color. But they're both shorts. A dress. <laughs> Now who sees that as black and blue? Still black and blue? Okay. Because I yeah, I used to, I used to see that as black and blue, but I, I can't see it as black and blue anymore. It looks like gold and white to me. Put your hand up if you see that as blue and black. Okay. So it's still okay. Because I, I was because I was trying to find the original picture, I had to find it on Wikipedia, but I couldn't find the blue and black picture because they all look gold and white to me. So I was like, didn't know which one it was. But a man's dress might be like that. So that's it now. Right? So I mean, I, I wouldn't wear, oops, I wouldn't wear something like that. But you know, I, I wouldn't mind wearing something like that if I was in China. <laughs> a skirt, so it's like a woman's skirt, like something my wife would wear. And here's like a sarong. I mean, you know, my dad, my dad actually wears a sarong to sleep. So he still he still wears a sarong. Um, it's a Malaysian thing as well. So you know, Fijians, Samoans, I don't know what these guys are. <laughs> oh, I went a bit too far. <laughs> Uniforms. So, uh, so you see my point there? So, so depending on how you divide those categories, if you go deeper into those categories, then you can see that there, there can be men and women's clothing, even though at the highest category level it's unisex, but you have different types of each one. Now, what about, what about uniforms? Because um, somebody asked me the question, well, you know, when we, when we dress like this for soccer, then are we disobeying that command? Because isn't, isn't the idea of the command to say, well, men and women should look different. Um, and, and if you're wearing something that makes you look exactly the same, are you an abomination then? Well, I don't think so, because I think if, if we look at the verse and what it says, it says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, I think it's, 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 an, it's, a, it's a conviction or it's an interpretation to say, well, therefore the intention of this commandment is that men and women look different. And I have no doubt that God wants men to be masculine and he wants women to be feminine. But does that mean in every instance it's a sin, therefore, for a man and a woman to look similar? I don't think so, because this is not saying that men and women can never look similar. It's just saying that a man should not wear that which pertains to a woman, and a woman should not put on that which pertains unto a man. But does that rule out the possibility of unisex clothing? Where there is clothes that do not pertain to either gender. Do you know? So I might have a shirt. You know, I might not want to wear a pink tight-fitting shirt because I feel that that pertains to a woman. I might wear a looser shirt. But then when it comes to sports clothing, where there's unisex clothing, where there's an outfit that is designed both to be worn by a man and a woman, is, am I putting on something that pertains to a woman? Is the woman putting on something that pertains to a man? No. Because does this verse rule out the fact that we can look similar? I personally don't think so. And this is why I think uniforms come into play. So you can have outfit, an outfit that is gender neutral. Um, what else? You might have sports uniforms. You might have workwear. You might have something you need to wear at work 
that is the same, like a same t-shirt. And it's not like you're putting on a woman's t-shirt just because you're putting on a uniform, right? People that work at McDonald's, for example. And I know they normally make like a woman's version and a man's version, but that usually comes down to the cut and the fit as opposed to how it looks like. It's the same with sporting outfits. So you'd have women's shorts, you'd have women's shirts, and it might just be like a sl shorter sleeve and things like that. Um, or what about like, for example, baptism jumpsuits? You know, some people will say like, there's no such thing as gender neutral clothing. You know, it's an abomination for a man to, woman to put on a man's garment. But yet a lot of Baptist churches will put on this like baptism jumpsuit, which is like, you know, a, a jumpsuit that's a shirt and shorts that's kind of hard material and they baptize people in so it's modest. They don't have a problem with putting that on a man or a woman, you know, and, and they're not making this woman be an abomination because she's putting on shorts. You know, my, my wife was baptized in that outfit. I can't, remember what I, was, I can't remember what I was baptized in that outfit. Has anyone seen my baptism video? So, you know, we wore the same garment, you know. So is that, that would be a sin then if, if you were to apply this verse that way. But I don't think that's the right way to apply it. So I, I hope you can see that when it comes to men and women's clothing, there, there is a girl version and a guy version. And it might be dictated by social norms. It might be dictated by conscience and culture and tradition. Um, but that's all it will ever be. Um, because the Bible does not define what a man and a woman's garment is.